Hey, welcome back. In today's video, we're gonna talk about something extremely exciting. It's a new large language model, but much more than that. It's called Hugging GPT, and it's by the company Hugging Face. And if you're not familiar with Hugging Face, it's a website that hosts a large array of different large language models, machine learning models, a whole bunch of different libraries and tools to help you build uh, artificial intelligence and it's just a great community to be a part of if you want to stay on the cutting edge of artificial intelligence but for today we're going to be talking about their recently announced hugging gpt and why i'm so excited about hugging gpt is because it actually promises to bring all of these disparate large language models and machine learning models together in one giant tool set controlled by ai and they are claiming that it's actually one step closer to AGI, artificial general intelligence. So the way to think about it is hugging GPT is kind of like this central brain and it has an enormous tool set of large language models, machine learning models at its disposal to use for different tasks from the user. If I'm the user and I wanna say, hey, summarize this PDF, it's gonna to need to not only be able to extract the data from the PDF, possibly images from the PDF, but also the text from the PDF. And that could be a multi-step process to actually return the results the user is expecting. And so let's talk a little bit about the paper and then why it's so important. And so here's the paper, and in the abstract, the first line says it all. Solving complicated AI tasks with different domains and modalities is a key step toward artificial general intelligence. And what they're saying is large language models today are primarily for text. And that, that is great, but we're going to need video, we're going to need audio, we're going to need all these different formats brought into one place. And typically for a single large language model to do that, it's really, really difficult. They tend to get distracted and it's very difficult to train. And what they're proposing is they have a central brain or almost a dispatch where they can tap all of these other large language models and artificial intelligence tools to help them with the user's prompt even if it's extremely complicated, multi-step, multi-modality. And what it says here is LLMs could act as a controller to manage existing AI models to solve complicated AI tasks. It is really, really cool to think about. It's one model controlling many other models, and that can be extremely powerful. And so let's look at this graphic here because it really speaks to what is possible with hugging GPT. So in this image, they're given a prompt. Can you describe what this picture depicts and count how many objects in the picture? So it's going to need to do a lot of different analyses on this picture to get to that prompt result. So here it says, a text can describe the given image, a herd of giraffes and zebras grazing in field. So that's first. It has to understand the image and understand what the contents of the image are. Next, it says there are five detected objects, giraffe, zebra, zebra, giraffe, and zebra and I have generated bounding boxes in the above image. With this, it's done image classification, object detection, and image caption, combining three different libraries all into one response. And there are four different steps that Hugging GPT does when it receives a response. First, it does task planning. It understands the prompt and starts to plan out what tools am I gonna to need to execute on this prompt? Next, it does model selection. So it actually looks through all of the different models it has access to, and I'll explain in a second how it does that, chooses the ones it thinks it's gonna need for the job, and then brings them in. Next, it actually executes the task. So it uses all of those different models, grabs the data it needs, and then ingests it back. And then finally, it takes all of that data and summarizes it or boils it down into a response to give back to the user. Really, really awesome stuff. This paper also talks about generalized models being really good at a lot of things, but specialized models being better at specialized things. I mean, of course that makes sense. And so it says right here, for some challenging tasks, LLMs demonstrate excellent results in zero shot or few shot settings but they are still weaker than some experts. And experts, in this case, they're talking about fine-tuned models. And next it says, we point out that in order to handle complicated AI tasks, LLM should be able to coordinate with external models to utilize their powers. So 
It's saying the generalized model should be kind of the orchestrator and the specific fine-tuned model should do what they're best at, which are specific tasks for very specific queries. So another thing I highlighted is Hugging GPT has integrated hundreds of models on Hugging Face and they do, they have access to so many and they've already integrated hundreds, which is really cool. And they've integrated it all around ChatGPT and ChatGPT from OpenAI is still that central brain the dispatch, the orchestrator, as you will. And it says that they cover 24 tasks such as text classification, object detection, semantic segmentation, image generation, question answering, text to speech, text to video. So let's say I need to put together a presentation about seagulls and I want it to be a multimedia presentation. So, so first it needs to actually do the research on seagulls. It needs to put together a PDF potentially. It needs to have images, maybe video as well. And this probably wouldn't be possible from a single generalized model. Whereas a single general model orchestrating a bunch of fine tuned models for each of these individual subtasks would do it really well. And so this paragraph explains what it's doing in much more detail. I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but let me touch on a few points. Hugging GPT uses large language model as an interface to route user requests to expert models. So again, it's like that orchestration layer or a router. Hugging GPT is not limited to visual perception tasks, but can address tasks in any modality or domain. And then last, I wanna talk about how they do this. Hugging GPT adopts a more open approach by assigning and organizing tasks based on model descriptions. So literally the descriptions that people are putting about their models in Hugging Face, that's how ChatGPT, the brain of it, is deciding which model to use for which task. It is really fantastic how they thought about doing this and architecting. This open and continuous manner brings us one step closer to realizing artificial general intelligence. Whether you think we need to pause or not, and I had a video about that, this does bring us one step closer because this architecture allows models to do what they do best, whether you're a fine-tuned model or a generalized model. And so in this paper, they give a lot of different examples of how it works, how it can be used, and I really encourage you to check it out. I'll link to this research paper in the description below. And I am super excited to try it out and to play with it, and I can't wait. So. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.